This is how Jesus put it for us. In the book of John chapter 15. He said, no greater love than this. No greater love than this. That a man should lay down his life. For his friend. No greater love than this. That a man should lay down his life. Probably spoke in terms that they could understand from the human part of side, which is a man. But can you imagine? God, who is spirit, to lay down his life and put on flesh and die for you. The one he created. Huh? If I die for you, yes, yes. To a certain extent. But you can my, my creator. My creator. To put on flesh. To look like me. To die for me. Not just to die for me. To die in my place. Think about this. He is the judge. And at the same time, the prosecutor. At the same time, the criminal. So he sits in the seat of a judge and the prosecutor presents the case and somebody is judged and is sentenced and leave the seat of the judge and comes to the one that has been sentenced and says, don't worry about the sentence. I'm going to take your place. And so as we celebrate the death of Christ, God wants you to understand that. That he is the judge, the prosecutor at the same time, and you are the one that committed the crime. After sentencing you, then he takes your place. And he died. And Bible said that night, in which our Lord was betrayed, took the bread and he broke it. And then he gave to his disciples. He says, I want you to eat this. Because this is my body that is broken for you. So let's eat as we think about that love. After that, he took the cup that was full of wine and he drank or he supped himself a little bit and then he gave to his disciples. He says, I want you to drink this for this is my blood in the New Testament for the remissions of your sins. And let's take knowing that there's a covenant to break the bondage of sin of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Bible says, as often as we eat and drink, we do show the Lord is death. Till he comes.
God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to heal. He came to heal and to forgive. He bled and he died. To buy my pardon. To buy my pardon. An empty grave. An empty grave. Is there to prove. There to prove. My, Savior my Savior lives. He calls. He lives. He lives. I can face tomorrow because, because he, he lives. All my fears is gone. Because I know. His world, I live in justice because He lives, and because He lives, and because He lives, I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know He owes my future and my life is what I live in just because. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 1. And remain standing, please. Because he lives, our life is worth a living. Because he lives, our life is worth a living. There are many times that life makes us think that we are here forever. <laughs> and so we do all things with an understanding that we are here forever. And yet we are not here forever. The purpose of life is Jesus Christ. The purpose of life is Jesus Christ. Yes, Christo. Not education. Si kusoma. Not money. Si sente. Not riches. Si bugaga. Not marriage. Si bufumbo. Not children. Si bana. Not cars. Si motoka. Not houses. Si mayumba. Not politics. Si not guns. Si mundo. But Jesus Christ. Na yes, Christo. Everything that God blesses us with. Yes, eh, Everything that God blesses us with is simply to make our life comfortable. That's all. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. The Bible says, a man that is born of a woman is here for a few days. In the words of Job, Naked came I into this world. Naked shall I return. The name of the Lord be praised. I hear him is somebody. But because Jesus came and he died and rose from the dead, life is now worth a living. Amen. Say life is worth a living. Because in life, you understand the meaning. 
and the true meaning of life. Are you hearing me, brethren? The true meaning of life. Yesterday, we celebrated the life of our brother, Emma. But I will never forget a few years in Imbale when he was doing his master's. He could spend literally hours at night studying sometimes putting his feet in the water because he had to work during the day and started during night yesterday we celebrated his life here then what's the meaning of life is it education is it politics what is it the true meaning of life is a life in Christ. Live it for Christ. Let me say it again. The true meaning of life is a life in Christ but also lived for Christ. Let me say it again. The true meaning of life is a life in Christ and then you live your life for Christ. The way you live for Christ is by telling Christ, thank you for giving me this life. And I give it back to you as a service for you. That's the true, true, true meaning. Not your beauty, not your money, not your fame, not your staff, not your height, not your status, not your guns, not your fame. No. No, a thousand times no. And if you allow the things of the world to define life to you, you will live a very miserable life. You may be seated. If you allow money, car, beauty, positions, job to define life for you, you will live a very miserable, a very miserable, a very miserable, a very miserable life because you will live a life by events, by feelings, by social gatherings, by social standing, by what you have achieved, by your academics, by, 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 by your friends. Are you hearing me, my brethren? True meaning of life is not defined by what you have. It's not defined as much as true happiness. It's not defined by things. Jesus said to a man that came to him, wanting him to judge between his brother. <laughs> And says, well, this, and Jesus said, listen, listen, listen to yes, me. So I'm not a judge between your two brothers. Because life is not contained in the abundance of the things a man has. And so, living a life of faith is the way to true happiness. Because in faith, you are satisfied. In faith, you always remain hopeful. In faith, you never lose sight of heaven. In faith, you never lose sight of true life, which is love. In faith, you know there is always a second, a fourth, a tenth chance. Because in faith, you know there is forgiveness. And God can give you a second chance. Either in this life or life after death. 
And that's why the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith. And the Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. And the Bible says, if we ask anything, let us ask in faith, nothing wavering. So a life lived in God should be a life of faith so that your life is not defined by anything around you because everything around us is very, very temporal. Nothing in this world is permanent. Nothing, absolutely nothing. The other day, all of us watched the journal. Very, very terrified. And he said, is there anybody who can take me on the border before I lose blood? Think about that. On the border. And he was taken by a border border. And in the hospital, he said, I'm so grateful to God, to God, that he has given me a second chance. God. So you... Define your life by things. You define your life that I, 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 because I don't have this, I'm going to lose sleep. <laughs> you will lose sleep many, many, many times. Because you'll develop anxiety attack, you will develop depression, you, you will develop this, sometimes you develop ulcers, sometimes you develop fear, and fear becomes, becomes a part of your life. But when you have faith in God, that tells you that God is your strength, that God is your helper, that God is your shelter, God is your rock, God is the answer to your questions. God is the way when you cannot find way. God is healing when you don't know what kind of sickness is paining you. That God can define life to you. That God can find you at your crossroads and lead you with his hand by the way. The life lived for God and in God is the success you need. Not money, not cars, not things, not education. As much as you need to get education, as much as you need to have a job, as much as you need to get married, as much as you need to have a career. But there comes a time when all your achievements cannot define the situation you are in and cannot take you more than where you are. But when Jesus gets hold of you and you get hold of Jesus and you trust his wisdom and you trust his grace, he will take you from glory to glory, from one level to another level, from one piece to another piece. Are you hearing me, somebody? In the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, we have a man who deliberately chose. Yes, he was called to talk about Jesus. But he also chose to talk about Jesus. Let me say again. He was called by God to talk about Jesus. But he also made a deliberate decision that he was going to talk about Jesus. And he talked to his friends about Jesus, but also he talked to himself about Jesus. He talked about this to sickness about Jesus. He also addressed his concerns about Jesus. Everything that faced him in life, he talked to that challenge about Jesus. And 
That is faith. Sickness comes. You talk to sickness about Jesus. You remind sickness. Jesus is still a healer. And I will be healed. Mrs. Sabandeke was testifying here. She said, there was a scripture in Psalms 170 that kept coming to our heart. I will not die but I will live and testify to the goodness of God. To Nakasero Hospital she went. The scripture was sounding in our heart. To Mulago Hospital the scripture was still sounding. I will not die but live. When the head became heavy like a bag of cement I will not die. When the fever was too much I will not die. Couple of days later, she was standing back on her feet. And she testified to the goodness of God. That's what faith can do. Not because they are not challenges, but we challenge our challenges by our faith. Let's listen again. Not because they are not challenges, but you challenge your challenges by the life of faith. Jesus told us and said, and he said, and he said, since the days of John the Baptist, until now, there is violence on this planet called earth. The kingdom of God suffers violence. But it is the violent that you take it by force. You've got to take your ground. And you've got to tell sickness stand on the other side of the line. This is my territory. I can see you invading my land. But as surely as there is a God, you are getting out. You are leaving. You can't stay here. But for you to say that, you have to have the word of God deep in your spirit. Because out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. But if you have fear in there, you have worry in there, you have gossip in there, you have all kinds of trash, you can't speak faith. Are you hearing me, somebody? You have fear. You have condemnation in there. You have discouragement in there. You have disappointment in there. You have all things that are happening around you. Oh, COVID this, COVID that. So, so what? If COVID is here, is here. So what are you going to do about it? Then die now and leave us alone. Oh, I'll get on the plane and go to America. America? COVID is there. COVID I'll get on the plane and go to Brazil. Brazil? Oh, India? Oh, these other places. The problems of the world are the same. I hear me, somebody. But you've got to allow the word of God to take root in your heart so that in the times of challenge, the word of God simply comes out out of your mouth. So natural. So natural. So natural. You don't struggle. You don't look for the Bible. Yes, you read the Bible. But because you have hid the word of God in your heart, now the word of become, becomes a lamp to your feet and becomes a light unto your back and it becomes healing to your body and it becomes power of creation and you begin 
to send it out. As the Bible tells us in the Psalms 107 and verses 20 that he sends his word and he heals them and delivers them from all, from all, from all their destructions. But the same way God sent his word is the same principle you use to send God his word out of your spirit to that sickness you turn in it has to go it has to go you feel pain in the body but sickness has to go you can't lift your head but the word of God deep within you is alive and well the life of God in your soul is alive and well because over the years you have cultivated the word of God in your spirit Are you hearing me, somebody? You must understand that. Because there are battles that your pastor cannot fight for you. There are battles your man of God cannot fight for you. Your woman of God cannot fight for you. Your church cannot fight for you. Your husband cannot fight for you. Your wife cannot fight for you. Your friend cannot fight for you. All of us can simply come around and tell you it is well. But we will never know the pain you face. We may never even feel it. And you must have a place within there where the word of God is so resident. And says poverty, you came too late. Sickness, you came too late. Diseases, you came too late. Stomach pain, you came too late. Ulcers, you came too late. I'm not losing this battle. Because great, great, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Great is he. Satan, you're not having another baby from me. You are not making me to lose another sleep. Because the word of God tells me that God gives his beloved sleep. Why? Because God told us that cast your burdens unto the Lord. So I'm not carrying this burden anymore. Either God takes them or you take them back. I'm not a burden carrier. You tell Satan there are two ways to carry this burden. One, God will take them or you pick them and you carry them. I'm not a burden carrier. Satan, you're a burden carrier and Jesus is a burden carrier. So one of you has to choose. Jesus came to set me free and so from my head up to the soles of my feet Feet, I am free. My legs are free. My spirit is free. My mind is free. My soul is free. Everything about me is freedom, 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 freedom. freedom. I'm free from fear. I'm free from worry. I'm free from sickness. I'm free from disease. But for you to say that, that word must be deep and rooted in your spirit. Because out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. So that means when you wake up in the morning, before you check your WhatsApp status, check on Psalms 23. So what does Psalm 23 say? The Lord is my shepherd. When you go to bed, before you go to bed, check on Psalms number one. Before you go to, to, to lunch, Check on the Bible WhatsApp page. 
Psalms 91. <laughs> he that dwells in the secret place <laughs> of the, the Most High shall abide under the shadow <laughs> of the Almighty. <laughs> when you put <laughs> in your bank card in the machine <laughs> and they tell you it's sufficient, <laughs> go to Philippians chapter 4, your heavenly account. Verses 19. What does it say? And my God <laughs> shall supply all my needs according to, the, to his riches. Say, glory, I have the money. Uh, this money that was trying to withdraw was not enough. But I have found an ATM machine here. This one is withdrawing to me one million shillings. And because you know you have used faith, you rise up and say, Lord, I thank you. This one million that I need, that I, was, I wanted to withdraw, is coming. Is coming. I thank you for it. And I call it to come to me in any currency. If it comes in dollar, hallelujah. If it comes in pounds, glory. If it comes in shillings, in Canadian dollars, I don't care. All I care, one million shillings here. But for you to quote Philippians 4 and 19, you have to know where it is. Because when the problems come, they if you no time <laughs> to look at Isaiah, they give you no time to look at Luke. But when they come and already look is in your heart, you pull out the sword of the Spirit and you said like Jesus, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by everyone. It is written, if you shall serve the Lord, he will bless your bread and your water, and you shall not cast your young ones out. Oh, this stomach will have babies. Oh, this legs are strong. Oh, my goodness. My back is all right. Because... By the stripes of Jesus, I, I am healed. I'm not lining up in like hospitals. I, I was about to get her into the hospital. But I have remembered. I have remembered. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon him. And you look at him like hospital. And you said, bye bye. I'm going home. <laughs> Can I have a witness? I remember calling Mrs. Savaneke. And after I prayed, I said it's well. Then I called again. He says, you know, Pastor, the doctor said that I have to report to Mulago Hospital. And then I asked her, what do you say? And she said, Pastor, I don't feel like I'm not going to Mulago Hospital. I'm going to sleep here at night. If I want to go to Mulago Hospital, I will call you tomorrow. Two days later, I said, how are you? Off to Mulago she says, no, I'm still here. So from, from home, back to church, now she's praising God. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God will make a way where it seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for you. He will be your God. Hold you closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. God will make a way where it 
seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for you. He will be your God. Hold you closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Two months ago. I called my brother, Dr. Peter. He was seriously sick. <laughs> Seriously sick. If you don't know, Dr. Peter is the twin brother of Pastor John. He couldn't even talk. He says, Brother, what's the problem? He says, You can't believe I have COVID. <laughs> he said, You have COVID? You have COVID. I said, You know something, brother. You will live. You know, he said, You will live. He says, But I have the legs, I can't move my legs. He says, No, you, you can die. We need you. But also, Uganda needs. You know, Dr. Peter is one of the top surgeons we have in Uganda. Top. During the era of COVID, when the governor of Uganda fell down and he could not ride, he had developed a tumor in his head. And they couldn't take him anywhere because every place was closed. And they looked around the entire country. Who could operate the head <laughs> of the governor of Uganda? And nobody could. And but, but that's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue is simply this. I said, you have COVID. Because I'm not a doctor. But I'm not Dr. Jesus. And I said, in the name of Jesus, COVID, get out of the lungs. Get out of the nose. Get out! One week later, how are you feeling? I'm better. Now he's back in the theater. Operating heads. <laughs> Faith in God works. And everybody goes, doctor, please, doctor, please. And I said, doctor, let's go now to Dr. Jesus. Faith in God works. But you must know scripture. The word of God has to be very resident in your spirit. You don't pick it up when there's a problem. You simply cultivate the word of God. Every moment you get in the morning at lunchtime before you go to bed. So when there is a challenge, the word of God simply flows out of Naturally. I hear it. I hear it. Five months ago, when my wife was in America, I called them and I said, the entire house now COVID. Yes, COVID, COVID. 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 What's wrong with this COVID now? And I said, you know, the word of God promises that God sent his word and he heals you. So I said, be healed. We'll talk tomorrow. Two days later, I'm okay. 
You have to learn that. Jesus said, In this world, you will have tribulations. But be of, he said, But in me, you'll have the peace because I have overcome this world. You've got to learn that. Are you hearing me? Second of June, we celebrated our children's birthday. Two days before they were born, we went to see the doctor. And they put the scanner on the, on the womb. And Destiny was not breathing. Now, Adam had turned to come out. Destiny was still up there, but not breathing. The doctor, in a simplistic way, she said, If you can do anything, just go to the hospital now. But in other words, the heart was gone. I said, thank you so much. On our way out, I laid hands, I said, this child shall live. We prayed and believed God. She has to live. On our way home, the water broke and the children began to move. By the time we get to the hospital, they were moving. The challenges of life are real. But you have to have faith in God. And you have to have the word of God in your soul. So when problems come, you pull out the word of God. And you begin to speak. And you begin to declare. You need to understand that. Remember before my wife went to America. A sister called us. Sister, we are And said the husband is dying. And we don't know what to do because there are blood clots everywhere from the legs, and the blood is not moving. And the legs are. Rotting every minute. And the doctor were almost giving up. So by the time she got to America, the doctor had made a decision to pull every machine of, of, of his body. Because there was no more hope. And remember the Wednesday we are over there. The situation was so serious. We just could not tell you what it was. But the hospital had given up. And we said no. He has to leave. We declare. We pray the word of God. We spoke in faith. And my wife went. When they got there, the doctor said, well, we don't know what to do. But the brakes are rotting every minute. And the only way is to cut off the legs. And if we cut off the legs, we don't know what will happen. So you make a decision. But there's no hope. So they decide to cut off the legs. Both legs. One from here, one from here. And when they cut off the legs, another problem developed. The bleeding could not stop. So they put on, they put on 28 liters. And they said, this is how far we go. And so we are going to leave it here. Tomorrow, 
don't know what will happen. So they removed everything. Tomorrow they come and check. The bleeding had stopped. And, 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 and he was still breathing. And the doctor said, we don't understand this. It has never happened. We don't know what to do. A few days later, the conscious came back. He began to speak. One month later, out of the hospital. You know, challenges of life are real and they happen to anyone. To people that you know and the people you don't know. Sometimes they happen to you. But if you have the word of God in your soul, you lift up that sword of the spirit and you say, Satan, this is how far you go. But if you simply sit down, Mama wa again food. They don't jack funny mama wo. Siman Jacola, Catonda one farm, then Badem Locoli, Baden Saba, Bino Sivimani, Bino Sivitega, Bolimo, Bolimo Cassio, your own Takiriza, and that rubbish of unfaith. Catonda Tacola Galana would Takiriza Tabuera Mo. The Lord does not deal with unbelief. Bolina Cuberanga, yes. Have to be like a Jesus. Lazarus, yeah, food day. Lazarus is dead. The question he asked is, where did you bury him? So when they tell you that Lazarus is dead, what is the next question he asks? Where did you bury him? When they ask you, what do you want to do? He just says he's going to resurrect again. Tell your neighbor. If they tell you Lazarus is dead, the next question to ask, where is he buried? When they ask you what you want to the next question is, tell them, he's going to resurrect. When you find my mother, and say he's Maliza now working, okay. tell him I already said he's not working, he's not working, he's not working, he's not working, if you believe, you will see the glory of the Lord. Just remove that stone. When they say he's speaking, just to say this is going to be the glory of God. That is faith. The business is going down and under. The business is going down and under. You said, which business? Which one are you talking about? This one? Oh, my brother. This is a very healthy business. Father, in the name of Amen. Jesus, you business come alive now. Come alive. Come. I speak to you. Live, 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 live. Before COVID, this wonderful woman closed her school. Wait. Then <laughs> What do you want to Kampala Muzibu. Kampala is hard. Bagenda Kuzi Kango Lava. They are going to bury you alive. Nebo Gamba. But when you say, Well, to Wali Kumarumbe, Kubanga to Wali Mufuya Sise, because there is no air here. We do not need a no hair. No Muska Sigenda Mute Kawo. I'm not going to put a hair. I Wali Chama Gedo. That's where there is a miracle. All things happen in our homes. There will happen, there will happen. 
your faith when you praise. One day I was going to die in a car crash. I was from taking Moses to school when he was still young. As I was coming there was an there ice was ice There is that black ice. It, it, it comes down and Sometimes they fail to remove it. So when I came, I knocked on the black ice. The last word I remember speaking, I said, Jesus, remember me. The car turned. It turned around the road. It turned around the road. And at the end, it hit the electrical pole. By the time I realized, there was fire brigade, there was police, there was an ambulance. And there was there was dam everywhere. And the car was badly crushed. Only where where I was seated. I got out of the car without any scratch. They brought the machines. And they came and they took me to the hospital. 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 They took me to the there is no situation that does not come against man. But even if you have faith, every time you stand in faith, God will sure work for you. God will sure come through for you. Whatever you have lost, they end here today. Whatever you have lost is enough. The miscarriages have gotten now. Bimara, Gamba, Bimara, Gamba, Tibulina, yes, Echimara, Chimara, Gamba, Tibulina, yes, Echimara, Chimara, the one who told you, Fam, the one who was young, and in the book of Fam, the one who was young, and in the book of Fam, business young, the ten Yaku Fam, Chimara. They talk about COVID. Come and sit down. Give me your hands. They will end up with the church. They will end up with COVID. Anyone to die of COVID? Say it as you believe. Come and have a one game. Back here is all right. Come and have a one game. Back here is all right. Come and have a one game. Back here is all right. Come and have a one game. Back here is all right. Come and have a one game. Back here is all right. My I stand here and pray. My parents will not die of COVID. Because of what I have heard today. COVID is not still people from us. Now we have to say that 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 we have to more especially when I, I feel the leading of the Spirit. While I'm telling you, save your family members. But when I'm telling you such things, you're just looking. It's up to you. And don't tell me, Pastor, pray for my people. I'll not do it. Just believe God for your family. For your mother. Where you know. This one. This one. It represents you there. Lift up your head. Stand on your feet. Declare. Wherever you don't want COVID to go. Say the name of Jesus. My children. My siblings. Your parents if they're alive. Say the name of Jesus. My parents will not die of COVID. They will live. I refuse the power of the name. I refuse the power of the name. I will not die of COVID. I will not die of COVID. I will not bury anyone who is ending with Emma. Yes. COVID is ending. It will not kill another person again. Chigane. Refuse. Chigane. Refuse. Refuse.
Let's hold of your offering and raise it before the Lord. Come on, Our God. We thank you for your people. For their faith. For what we have. That seed we declare. A blessing. A grace. The power of God. Let their life have a meaning. The blessing of the Lord. Let doors be opened before them. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Don't forget on Wednesday. If you are among the minister or if you are minister and you are serving on the Heroes Day. We have a breakfast. Come, let's join. Ideas, let us understand how big is the vision the Lord has given us. Between 5th and 6th November. Amen. Amen. Let's join us in prayer. Let's join us in prayer. Let's join us in prayer. to agree with me. We all are God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are before and I really need you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.